Hi everybody, it's Double Blinds Editor-in-Chief Shelby Hartman. I'm here to talk to you about our 10 most favorite kinds of psilocybin mushrooms. You may or may not know that there are actually more than 180 different species of psilocybin-containing mushrooms which grow around the world. So what are our most favorite kinds of psilocybin mushrooms? Let's go through them now. Oh, and a disclaimer, I am not a mycologist, so I'm going to do my best with these Latin names, but forgive me if I mispronounce something. Number one, so if you've bought psilocybin mushrooms from like a guy who knows a guy or your friend or whatever, then they were most likely psilocybe cubensis. And there are more than 60 different strains of psilocybe cubensis, like Golden Teachers, B+, Penis Envy, yes, that's the real name, and Pink Buffalo. Uh, the reason why you have probably had psilocybe cubensis is because these ones are the easiest to grow at home, and there has been a mushroom growing movement with tons of people growing different strains of psilocybe cubensis at home since at least the 1970s, including Terence and Dennis McKenna's Psilocybin, the Magic Mushroom Grower's Guide. In fact, due to decades of selective home breeding, there are now 60 different strains of psilocybe cubensis like Golden Teachers, I love Golden Teachers, B+, Penis Envy, and Pink Buffalo. While different strains of cubensis can also be found in the wild all over the world, the indoor grown types are typically more potent. That's one of the reasons that mushrooms you buy on the underground market are often stronger than the ones you pick in nature, since they've been bred for strength and are grown in specific substrates, the materials in which you grow mushrooms that increase potency. Psilocybe cubensis also grow naturally throughout the southern U.S., Mexico, Central America, South America. They also grow in Cuba, India, Southeast Asia, Australia. They basically grow all over the world. In nature, you've probably heard that they prefer to live on dung and can also be found on well-manured land in the spring, summer, and fall. So why it is that environments need to be perfectly sterile when you grow them at home is a mystery to me. Mycologist Paul Stamets, who we recently did a webinar with, it is such an amazing person, um, has called psilocybe cubensis, quote, the most majestic of the psilocybes because they're easy to recognize, they have a golden color. Also something else to know is that they turn a bluish color when they are handled roughly due to psilocin oxidizing, basically them being exposed to oxygen. So that's one way that you might be able to identify them in the wild. You really have to be careful when you're foraging because there are tons of mushrooms which are fatal, um, so you definitely don't want to accidentally eat a, the wrong mushroom. Number two, psilocybin similenciata, <laughs> better known as liberty caps or witches hats. Liberty caps are the most common psilocybin containing mushroom in the wild. According to Paul Stamets, they are also the third most potent. My friend actually recently asked me if I had ever taken Liberty caps before and I told him that I hadn't, but he said they're his absolute favorite type of psilocybin containing mushroom to trip on. Um, they grow wildly all over the Northern hemisphere and they prefer rich and acidic soil like grasslands, meadows, pastures, and lawns, especially ones fertilized with sheep or cow manure. Because this is such a common environment around the world. Think lawns, gardens, soccer fields. They grow in many countries throughout Europe, including France, Germany, Italy, Bulgaria, Finland, Iceland, Russia, and Turkey. They also grow in North America. Number three, psilocybe azurescence. <laughs> I'm doing my best here, people. Flying saucer mushrooms is what we call them, flying saucers. And for the hardcore psychonauts out there, you're definitely gonna wanna know about this one because it is the most potent psilocybin species that grows in the wild. And the story goes that they were originally found by Boy Scouts camping in Oregon in 1979. A bunch of kids looking for action. Is this the way we ought to use our boy power? Think about it. America's manpower begins with boy power. Let's not waste it. Be a volunteer worker with the Boy Scouts. But they weren't an official species until Paul Stamets identified them in 1996. Believe it or not, 
they contain up to 1.78% psilocybin. Number four, psilocybin tamponensis, magic truffles or a philosopher's stone. If you have been bopping around the Netherlands and popped into one of their magic truffle shops, this is what you have purchased. They are also served at a number of psilocybin retreats in the Netherlands through a legal loophole. The truffles themselves are not quite as potent as whole psilocybin mushrooms, so you have to take more truffles than you would psilocybin mushrooms, but as long as you get the ratios right, they're said to be equally healing and equally profound. Number five, psilocybin cyanescence, or wavy caps. They're called wavy caps because, you guessed it, the rippled shape of its cap. They're believed to be native to Central Europe and the Pacific Northwest, but it's really hard to tell because they are now one of the most widespread wild psilocybin-containing mushrooms in the world. That's because of where they grow. They like woody debris like the wood chips and mulch that populate gardens, trails, and parks. They're really tough to grow indoors, but they're very popular among psychonauts and foragers because they also contain a high percentage of psilocybin. Number six, Coplandia cyanescens, aka Caneolis cyanescens or blue meanies. Now these are sometimes confused with a strain of psilocybin cubensis called blue meanies, but these mushrooms are different in a few ways. For one, these are the first species of mushrooms that we've mentioned that isn't part of the psilocybe genus, but is instead a part of the Peneolis genus. But that doesn't mean that these are not some potent mushrooms. In fact, these are some of the strongest psilocybin-containing mushrooms in the world with three times the amount of psilocybin and psilocin than psilocybe cubensis. Number seven, psilocybe cerulescens, um, also known as derumbes, meaning landslide mushrooms in Mexico where they grow. These are the mushrooms that were given by curandera Maria Sabina to amateur mycologist Gordon R. Wasson. <laughs> Gordon R. Wasson, after having had this experience, came back to the United States, wrote about it for Life magazine, and it really sort of piqued America's curiosity in psilocybin mushrooms for the first time. Derumbes are still used ceremonially by the Mazatec people of Oaxaca, Mexico. Sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to take a minute to let you know that Double Blind has an online course on how to grow your own mushrooms. It walks you through every single stage of the grow process from buying your spores on a reliable site with shipping, tracking, etc., to inoculating your substrate, to harvesting and drying. The course comes with live support from five incredible mycologists who walk you through every stage of the grow process, answer all of your questions, and a community of now more than 1,000 people who are growing mushrooms around the world with Double Blind. It's really so beautiful. And we hope that if you feel called, you'll check out the course and join us at doubleblindmag.com. Number eight. Psilocybe Mexicana uh, has a really rich and interesting history. It's believed that this species of psilocybin-containing mushrooms was consumed by the Aztec people ceremonially before Spanish colonization. Psilocybe Mexicana is also the species that French botanist Roger Haim sent to Albert Hoffman in 1958. Hoffman, of course, was the chemist who discovered LSD, first synthesized in 1938. Hoffman used that sample to cultivate more magic mushrooms and isolate psilocybin and psilocin for the first time in a lab. In Mexico, they're often called pajaritos, meaning little birds, for packing such a wild experience into a small mushroom. Number nine, psilocybe chirulipus is also known as the blue foot mushroom. It's a rare psilocybin mushroom that grows in the U.S. and it's a wood-loving mushroom and it can be found growing on or around decaying hardwood logs, especially near river systems. Um, they can also be found growing on hardwood and debris and are widely distributed east of the Great Plains throughout the Midwest and the eastern U.S. and up to Canada. They are called bluefoot mushrooms because of their appearance. They have a blue hue at the base of their stem. They're moderately potent uh, psilocybin mushroom and roughly the same strength as psilocybin cubensis. 
Number 10, last but certainly not least, Psilocybe Stuncy. Blue ring. <laughs> That's what it's called. Psilocybe Stuncy. Again, forgive my pronunciation. Also known as blue ringer mushroom, um, psilocybe stunsi is a rare psilocybin mushroom. It only grows in the west coast of the US and Canada. Um, nicknames for them are blue ringer or blue legs um, because they have a significant bluing reaction when they're handled too roughly. But you gotta be careful with these ones because they look very similar to a toxic species of mushroom called Gallerina marginata. Um, and as mentioned before, always be careful when you're going out into the wild and foraging for mushrooms. We definitely recommend that you go with someone who knows what they're doing. So we really only scratched the surface today of different kinds of psilocybin containing mushrooms. As mentioned, there are more than 180 different kinds of psychedelic mushrooms. And the main takeaway really is that when you buy a psilocybin mushroom, or you grow a psilocybin mushroom, or you find a psilocybin mushroom, um, they all have varying compositions and varying levels of psilocin, baocystin, psilocybin. And so um, it's not, you know, in terms of dosing and tripping and stuff like that, um, really do your research to figure out, you know, what you're taking before you take it, and uh, just start low and, and go slow. As always, we want to hear more about your experiences. So if you have tried any of these mushrooms that we talked about today or any other strains that you really love that you think we should know about, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one.